Just a few mo months ago, I spoke to you about the Lighting Moon Christmas offering, which was an annual offering that we uh, used for foreign mission support. Um, we have another annual offering, the, our annual Easter offering. This came about through the leadership of a, another young woman named Annie Armstrong. She was born in uh, Baltimore, Maryland in the early 1800s into a Baptist family and, and had a strong Christian background, was baptized when she was around 19, became very active in her local church there in Baltimore. A few years later then, uh, 100 members from that church, including Annie Armstrong, separated from the church to start the Utah Place Baptist Church in Baltimore. And she remained, remained a member of that church for 70 years. Her interest in the, her local church uh, involved um, teaching uh, children. She taught from infants and kids of, who were infants all the way up to 12-year-old kids. She also uh, had a strong interest in women's issues, uh, Native Americans, the underprivileged, any, any issue, social issue that was prominent in Baltimore at that time. It wasn't uh, too long until she started developing an, an interest outside of the boundaries of Baltimore and spread throughout the United States. And it was in 1800, uh, 1880 in fact, that uh, she began to be involved with the uh, Lottie Moon offering that we were talking about uh, a few months ago. Uh, and she was uh, very supportive in that, uh, supportive in uh, missions, uh, education, uh, prayer for missions, and any uh, other social uh, problems that were prominent there in her area at that day. She was a, a good organizer, and just like uh, Lottie Moon, she had an excellent background. The family was fairly wealthy, and so she was able to do uh, pretty much whatever she wanted to do. Um, so she started supporting the, the missions, like I said, locally, but it soon spread uh, farther out, uh, even outside the United States. Annie uh, served as the first president for the Women's Baptist Home Mission Society of Maryland. And uh, it was through this organization that she really became more inactive, was very active in that first uh, annual offering for the uh, Lottie Moon offering, uh, organizing the local Baptist societies for missions throughout uh, her area. She was especially interested in ministering to uh, the Chinese, which we would think uh, was probably from the fact that Baltimore was on the ocean, uh, had a lot of international uh, ships coming into that area. She also had uh, a strong interest in Native Americans as well. So when she became president for the Baptist Mission Society, uh, one of their first projects was to establish a, a school for the Native American children and also a uh, special ministry to the Chinese, which would be coming in on the ships from the international countries. And uh, a short time after this, then she became what they called the corresponding secretary of the organization. And through this organization, she became the, uh, the uh, publisher and distributor for all the missions literature that was put out in the United States at that time through our church. And uh, we have to remember that at this time, all the correspondence, just like with uh, Lottie Moon, uh, was done by hand. So she wrote lots and lots of letters. Uh, she tried to reach every local church that had a uh, missions organization and get material to them on education, how to collect for the offerings, how to teach about missions. She uh, also was very uh, strong in uh, the fact that she maintained this activity. She, she stayed active in her local church as well as this other activity outside of, of uh, her local area. She was uh, a, a good administrator, which you can imagine she would have to be in that age for a woman to take that much responsibility. 
She came up with ideas of year after year. She tried to think of some new way to get the, the information that she needed out to these local churches. And as a result, then we have this annual offering at Easter. And in 1934, the title of this offering was the Annie Armstrong Easter Offering. This is a, quite a heritage we have. And, and when I was first read about these uh, two different offerings several years ago, I was amazed at the fact that all of the offering monies that we write out to Annie Armstrong or La the Moon go definitely to those mission areas. It is administrated through the other agencies of the church so that they don't have to take out funding for uh, the handling of just the logistics of getting the money to where it needs to go. So uh, I've always been very thankful for that. Uh, I just appreciate your time and wanted to help you realize that even though this was in the 1800s, women still had a definite impact for the Lord and uh, had strong leadership uh, throughout our country. Thank you very much.